Okie dokie. Okie dokie, everyone. Can I start off with by either saying either a very good morning or good afternoon or even a good evening, depending on where you are around the world. And thank you for joining me tonight on my latest episode of How I Discovered Trading Series for Stratton Markets. And tonight's episode is called How I Learned About the Different Time Frames. Written by myself, of course, which is James Triscothic. I'm the Chief Trading Educator for Stratton Markets. Now, of course, tonight we'll be talking about online trading and CFD trading. And like with every type of investment, it does indeed carry a great deal of risk. So I do suggest you do your own research and your own due diligence and know the risks at hand before entering any trade. Now, with that out of the way, this hairy, very old looking chap, actually, I would say, um, with a, you know, a little bit of a plump belly is myself. Like I said, my name is James Triscothic, and I'm the chief trading educator here at Stratton Markets. Now, I have over 20 years experience in the financial service industry. I actually started out as a mortgage broker where I specialized in commercial mortgages and subprime mortgages. I then moved into pensions and then alternative investments. Before entering the online trading arena, ran about 14 years, yeah, about 14 years ago. I've traded myself and I do trade and I've traded for several prop companies. I actually ran a, uh, a sales floor in the Philippine Stock Exchange as well as traded gold, which was my first thing I ever traded through the Buy Gold and Commodity Exchange in Dubai. I moved in portfolio management and later down the line, obviously, into uh, education is what I do now. I'm indeed a published writer. I've been published in several leading industry publications, including the likes of the Financial Times Advisor, uh, Market Watch, The Street, uh, City AM, several industry magazines, etc. Um, and I'm a avid market commentator. I happen to be extremely passionate about this market and high to born, by the way. Nice to see you, my friend. Um, I'm a very avid market commentator, very passionate about these markets. And I'm also a well-known public speaker. And I've spoken at several industry events around the world, including the likes of Hong Kong, Singapore, Dubai, Kuwait, uh, Jordan, South Africa more recently, London. Obviously, as you can tell, I'm a Brit, so don't hold that against me. Um, Germany, the name just name a few. Now, one thing I will say, Though I do go down the line of education, and I've got quite a very uh, solid level of experience, unlike other educators out there, I never ever claim myself to be an expert. Because I don't believe, I don't believe for a second an expert actually exists in this industry. Okay? If an expert does, you would never hear from him, because he'd be busy trading on a beach with a laptop, uh, etc., what I try and do and my approach to education on these markets is I will share with you my experience and my knowledge on this matter with the idea that you can then form your own rounded knowledge of it. And if it's right for you, you can go on and hopefully make a success of it. OK, so if you're looking for the holy grail or the secret answer, I'm never going to give you that. I will give you the facts. I'll give you the reality of trading. I'll give you the, you know, basic break it down into simple terms with the idea that you'll take on all these episodes, you take on all this education with the idea that you'll take away from yourself enough information for you to start forming your own, your own knowledge, your own strategy, your own plan in trading. Now, tonight's episode, like I say, it's about time frames. Okay. And first of all, I'm going to talk a, bit, a little bit about why time frames matter. Then I'm going to discuss different trading styles and the relation to time frames. Then I will talk about time frames for you so you can work out for yourself what time frame you should be really monitoring. Then I'll be talking about using multiple time frames. Then I will talk about time frames and breakouts. Then at the end of this little presentation, I'll do my usual question and answer session. But before we begin, let me show, here I am, there I am, hello everyone. Yes, this is me, in the flesh, hairy, wrinkly, and you know, 
because obviously you can actually see who I or what are my ugly face looks like. So why does time frames matter? New traders, and this is a fact, new traders tend to fail at the beginning as they are usually using the wrong time frame. Simple as that. They don't understand the importance of it. Time frames at the end of the day is individual. And it's individual to the trader. And it should really, really fit your personality. As well as that, the time frame you use on your charts has to fit your trading style, your strategy, and your way of life. Now, there are so many different trading styles and different time frames to, you know, to, to use. So, for example, if, if you were a position trader, now a position trader is an individual who will hold his position or she will hold her position for a very long time. She is looking for the overall picture or overall looking for something which was something will go over a long period of time. Um, and they will hold their position for months to maybe even years. So clearly when they're making their analysis, it was for your coffee, sorry. So clearly when they're making their analysis, the time frame they use is monthly. Then you have swing traders. Okay, and swing traders, again, are more short-term type of traders. They try and get in and sell from the high and buy in from the low, the old cliche when it comes to trading, okay? They hold their positions for maybe days to sometimes even weeks. So the time frame they base their analysis on should be around about four hours daily or even weekly. Then you have day traders or day trading. Now, day traders, they're short-term. So they only really hold their position for a day and close it before the, obviously overnight, before they go to bed. Okay, so they look at charts or time frames like for one hour, four hours, or indeed daily. Then you have scalping, those who get in the market really, really quickly. And they look at their charts on a very short term. So their time frame they, they use is five minutes, maybe up to 30 minutes. And really, they're only in the market for like seconds to minutes, and they don't hold their positions overnight. So straight away, that's why time frames are important, because it needs to fit in to your trading strategy and your trading style. You also, also, you have to consider the amount of capital you have available to you. For example, those who use shorter time frames. They need, you know, they have the ability or flexibility to have tighter stop losses, okay? Because they're already in the market for a short period of time. Whereas those who use longer time frames, i.e., position traders, they require a lot bigger stop losses as they need to be in the market for longer. So of course, it makes sense they will need a larger account balance. At the same time, it's a good idea to try and use multiple time frames. Now, here's the thing. Say, for example, you have a 15-minute chart and you're trading the euro dollar. Okay. Now, the euro dollar is trading under the moving average. And on a 15-minute chart, the MA is showing you a potential shorting opportunity. Remember, those who are... are it came to my previous uh, episodes when I spoke about moving averages. If an asset is below a moving average, uh, it indicates a downtrend. So that moving average then acts as a resistance if it's underneath it. So if it's on a 50-minute chart, for example, and it's under an MA, it's potentially showing you a shorting opportunity. However, if you are on an hourly time frame, the euro dollar is trading above the moving average. And this is indicating to you the opposite, a buying opportunity. Because remember, if the asset is above a moving average, potentially indicates a uptrend. And in that case, the moving average then acts as a support, which the asset can then buy or actually bounce off. So like I say, again, it does or can give you conflicting information. This is why usually look at multiple time frames to try and identify a pretty, you know, stable support or resistance. And I'll give you an example. This is the euro sterling 
a pair which I'm pretty much I'm very familiar with. So this is a moving, uh, so this is the euro sterling, okay, on a 30 minute chart. And I, like I said, I did this today. And as you can see, I've set my trend line, okay? And straight away, I can see if I get my little pen out here, a little la laser pointer, that's pretty. There I can see I've done my trend line, okay? And I can see on a 30 minute, this has been a key level of support around a 30 minute period. I then change my chart to one hour. This is 30 minutes. Change it to one hour. And hey presto, one hour, that trend line is still acting as a support, a key level. So I know straight away on a 30 minute and one hour, that level is key because it's actually acting on a 30 minute and an hourly chart to give myself even more confidence i look at then a daily and again i can see the same level i haven't changed i haven't done an extra level i've just drawn the same level in 30 minutes and I just changed the chart to one hour and then to a daily and all about the line remains in place i can see indeed that is indeed a key level so i know by looking and comparing the 30 minute and one hour and a daily that is indeed a level which is worth keeping an eye on now we'll see that is actually breaking from that level. And this is when they get even more interesting and it moves me on to breakouts. Now, what is a breakout? A breakout is when an asset breaks through a key level when it's either been in a ranging market or consolidating. Traders look out for breakouts as they can enter the market and ride the volatility. So obviously, like I say, we've seen the market it often trends like this is ranging, ranging, ranging up and down between two key levels, like in a channel. And we know where our potential resistance is and where our potential support is. Then something happens. Maybe a load of buyers break in or uh, economic event happens and suddenly we see a breakout. And this is what traders you understand, again, they compare it over different time frames. This is what traders look for. They look for the sudden movement of the asset because then they can either jump in the market to take an opportunity. Now, there's two types of breakouts. Continuation breakouts and reversal breakouts. Now, a continuation breakout this is when an asset is heading in a set direction, but the market takes a break before the trend continues. In other words, there's been a huge movement in either direction, and all of a sudden the market goes, okay, do you know what? I'm gonna take a little bit of a break, have a bit of a rest, and catch my breath, you know, have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, and just wait for a bit. So it's a bit like this. Here's an example. This is the euro dollar on one hour. So you see the market has clearly gone on a massive movement downwards, a dramatic movement downwards. Instead of continuing on that movement, what the market then does, it has a little bit of a breather. It has a break. Again, the whole point of doing this, you can see this and you can compare it on a 30 minute to one hour to a daily. If you can see it ranging like this, then you understand the market is indeed having a breather because we're waiting for this breakout. And when we see this breakout, this is when some traders who trade the breakout jump in on the market. Here's another example, British pound, US dollar, again, one hour, clearly on an uptrend. The pound, obviously the pound's been under an awful lot of stress over the last coming weeks due to obviously the debacle or the drama of the brick exit on an uptrend, but the market then decides to take a bit of a breather and have a bit of a rest. And then it decides to carry on. And this is when we watch for the breakout. When we see that level broken and we see it convincingly broken, those who trade breakouts will then maybe jump into the market. Then we have a different type of breakout. Again, this is called a reversal breakout. Now reversal breakouts, Start the same way as a continuation breakout. 
Whereas it goes in a set direction and then the market takes a breath, takes a breather, takes a pause. But instead of continuing, what it does instead, it reverses. And here's an example of a reversal breakout. So here we go. We got the gold on a daily. I know gold. I used to trade gold a lot back in my day. So we got gold on a downtrend. And then it has a break. It has a breather. It takes a break. Again, obviously, we will compare this over a 30-minute hour daily to give us an indication how strong those levels are. And instead of continuing downwards, what it does instead, it reverses. So again, if we see the level broken convincingly, then we know that asset has gone on reverse and it's a reversal breakout. Here's another example. The dollar Japanese yen, again, on a daily. Uptrend. Dollar is gaining strength against the Japanese yen. Market takes a breather. And instead of continuing, what it then does, instead, it breaks and reverses its pattern and ends going on a downtrend. Now, <coughs> excuse me, there are several methods of trading the breakout, okay? Um, and it does really realistically depend on your attitude to risk and the type of character you are. First, there's the aggressive approach. Those who are very aggressive with the, that method of training. And what they do is when they see a level broken, see the asset pass under risk support or resistance, what they do is they jump in straight away. They enter in straight as soon as they see a key level broken, setting their stop loss a little bit above that key level. And there's more of the approach, uh, the cautious approach, which in some ways, depending again on your method of trading, the type of person that you are, is the cautious approach. And what these individuals do, okay, is when they see a level broken, either a support or resistance, they don't jump in. What they do instead is they wait. And they wait for the rebound. And then the direction. And that's when they jump in. But why would they do that, James? I'll tell you, because those who maybe saw the other episode I did on how to understand support and resistance, when you have a support and resistance, when they are eventually broken, what they have a habit of doing is changing, changing their roles. Support becomes resistance and the resistance becomes a support. So those who are trading breakouts, what they do is as soon as they see an asset broken through a support line, for example, they don't jump in. They wait to see the asset go back up, touch it. And if that level then acts as a resistance, it proves to them in their mind's eye or in their opinion that indeed the asset has changed direction. And that's when they jump in. And if I give you an example, I actually have this. If I go back to my uh, euro, uh, here we go. Where is it gone? Which one I was looking at? It was this one here. Okay, if we go back to this, right, here's a prime example. The level I drew here on the Euro British pound, okay? This is on an hourly. As you can see, this was a key level. It acted as a support, 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 support. It then broke, and as the asset retraced, it then changed its role and became a support, uh, became a resistance. And it pushed the asset down. So this is what I mean by those people who wait to see the support or resistance change its roles. I'm sorry, you can see it there again on a daily look. Support, support, support. Resistance, resistance. It changed its role. So that's what I mean by the cautious approach. Now, up and coming episodes. Okay, this is a little brief one. This is a smaller one. I try and keep them short and sweet so I don't bore you too much. The next episode is on the 29th of January. And this is how I got to understand stock CFD. So on this episode, I'm going to go in a little bit more detail about stocks and shares, explain 
what you should take into account your analysis. So if you are looking to trade Netflix, for example, uh, what you need to take into account. So that would be an interesting one. Um, then, of course, I'll be releasing the February schedule at the end of the month as well. So what events and what uh, episodes I'll be doing next week. If you wish to speak to me, you wish to reach out, contact me, please, because I like new friends. You can email me on my email address, which is james at strattonmarkets.com. Or indeed, you can follow me on my Twitter account or direct message me, which is at jtruscothic. That Twitter account, of course, um, I don't obviously give advice because I'm not allowed to, but I do give you a heads up on what's happening in the market and, you know, the exciting stuff. It'll be quirky. So please feel free to join me on that. Or indeed, you can direct message me on my Twitter account, which is at J Triscothic. Now, before I move on to questions, of course, we've been talking about CFD and online trading. And like with all sorts of investment, it does indeed carry a great deal of risk. So I do suggest you do your own research and your own due diligence and know the risks at hand before entering any trade. With that out of the way, any questions at all related to my topic I covered tonight, timeframes and breakouts, any questions, please feel free to ask me now. And I'm all ears. And if I know the answer, of course, I will certainly share it with you. So any questions? Clear, don't be shy. I'm not that scary. Okay, is there any uh, slide or any part of the presentation you'd like me to go over again? Or um, maybe I move too fast on a certain segment, you want me to go back and go, could you discuss a bit more about that? Okay, did anybody find it least interesting and helpful? Did you en well, enjoy it at least? Do you find it helpful and, and uh, useful? Patrick, hello there. Yes, my friend, I'm pleased to say, yes, indeed, this session is recorded. Um, and yeah, if you've uh, registered, you will get a copy straight away. It was sent to your email. So yes, it's recorded. So don't worry. You can watch it as many times as you like. Actually, all my episodes, all the episodes I've done, um, is recorded, so you can have it anytime. Esteban, yes, me. Did you, did you enjoy it? You find it useful, yeah? You liked it. Very helpful. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Patrick. Oh, brilliant. Pauline, thank you very much. Uh, yes, I did enjoy it. It was helpful. Thank you, Pauline. Very nice of you to say. I'm glad you found it a little bit useful. Very helpful. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, Esteban, brilliant. Thank you. I appreciate that. I have a, uh, another question for all you fine people. Um, obviously, I, I, I've written now, I've done so many episodes now. And don't forget, when I do these sessions, when I write these this material, I write it for, for your benefit, for you to learn and hopefully find it useful and gain your own way of thinking. Is there any topics or anything in particular you would like me to cover in the future? Any episodes you'd like me to do? Maybe, um, you know, someone maybe wants me to do uh, an episode on oscillators again or uh, Elliott Way theory again or maybe um, a case study on something like, I don't know, the USD Japanese yen or I've done one on gold, but I can do one on gold again. You know, if there's any suggestions for future episodes or future topics you'd like me to cover, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to help. Patrick, may I request your last session by email? Absolutely, my friend. I will send you um, I'll send you the last couple of episodes I've done. I do one a week. So uh, I'll do. Uh, I'll send you the last three, and hopefully you will find that useful. So, yes, I will take care of that in the morning. No problem. Is there any, uh, is there any topics you guys like me to cover in the future? No? Well, look, if you suddenly, uh, that'd be great. No worries, Patrick, I'll take care of that. No problem at all. Uh, 
Okay, so how can we do good analysis before entering the market? Brilliant question. Esteban has asked a great question. He says, how do we do good analysis before entering into the market? Well, straight away, unless you're confident with your analysis, you shouldn't be entering into the market. Well, that's really helpful, James. Help. Thanks very much. Um, okay, look, there is no set rule, okay? Um, first of all, in my rule of thumb, you do need to discover what type of trader you are. Okay, what works? Are you a technical analysis trader or more of a fundamental trader? My opinion, okay, it's my opinion only, it's not should be taken as advice. You do need to have a combination of both and have a good understanding of both along with market sentiment as well. Really, if you want to get into the market, you need to take the time out to understand what's happening, what the market's talking about, um, what's the main story, and you know, that sort of jazz. You do have a good understanding. So, I mean, Bloomberg, Financial Times, you need to read. You know, there's no secret answer of like buy here, buy that. It doesn't work. Then you need to find what indicators work for you. For example, my example on the Euro uh, British pound, I tend or I used to tend to use trend lines a lot. And I used to watch for potential supports and resistance. And I used to draw it myself to understand where the buyers and sellers are. I call it. It's more naked trading, as in I don't tend to overly do with indicators, uh, apart from maybe the moving average crossover. I would take my time, and if I could see a key level or key level where people are buying in or selling from, then I would, you know, if I cross-referenced it over different periods of time, if I was confident enough, that's when I would enter the market. I would never enter the market on the back of just, um, you know, fear of missing out, just jumping in, you know. Because that's one of the biggest mistakes people do is they jump in really not understanding, A, what the story is, B, what's driving the market, and really where the buyers and sellers are. They just get carried away with something flashing at them. So really, my uh, suggestion is you attempt several different techniques to find what works for you. Record a trader's diary. Uh, make a trader's diary, which is basically writing down all the parts of your decision, i.e. the asset, the direction, entry level stop loss take profit why you think that thing's going to be moving and you write in all that and then you click trade now you know so you plan it you know you slow down the emotion you do it that way can i do uh, okay another quick question from patrick can i do a session on entry with trend line and support resistance yes i certainly can i've done one similar before um, but I can certainly do something more in depth and more, uh, I think, cause I, I do like trend lines. I, I do like, um, seeing the support and resistance with my own eye, not relying on technicals. So yes, Patrick, I'll do one for February. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Esteban, thank you very much. Very cool. My pleasure, Esteban, but look, please join more sessions. Okay. Because like I say, you can do one, one session and know everything. I do lots of these sessions with the idea that you will take away and find it useful. Okay. Is there any other questions at all? Anything else? Well, in that case, if there's no other questions, I'll sign off now. But like I say, please feel free to contact me if you think of something later. Please feel free to email me at jamesastranamarkets.com or indeed follow me on Twitter or direct message me on Twitter, which is at jtriscothic. Before I sign off, can I say a special shout out to Bourne, Patrick, Esteban, Pauline. Um, you've been brilliant. Thank you so much for uh, attending and indeed interacting and asking me questions. I really appreciate it because otherwise it gets quite lonely just speaking on my own. But also at the same time, can I say a big thank you out to every single one of you attending tonight. Look forward to seeing you next week. Um, please feel free to rate this uh presentation at the end you will see a star rating feel free to rate it whichever way you see fit and like i say if you want to contact me outside please email me on my email address or contact me on twitter till next time can i just say either a good morning good afternoon or even a good evening depending on where you are around the world till next time every single one of you trade safe